Hello, in this video I'm going to show you how to integrate Dockling installed locally on my machine into an NA10 workflow. Again, NA10 is installed locally on my machine. It's running within Docker. It's in the self-hosted AI starter kit container. As prerequisites, I've got Homebrew installed on my Mac. That's so that some of the Linux components will also be installed. Within Homebrew, I've installed Pipex. So this is to install the Dockling application. And the reason why I use Pipex is because it handles virtual environments um, nice and neatly, and it just solves a load of problems. So it's my preferred way for installing applications which support uh, Pipex. And then first thing, oh, the other thing I've got set up is my machine, my desktop, this is a M4 Pro, is a Mac Mini M4 Pro. It's actually got a static IP address set up. So, and that's important because the connection from Dockling back to this machine will be via SSH. And so if you use a an automatically assigned IP address, there's a chance in the future that that IP address is no longer relevant as a consequence. Um, it may break, break your workflow. So within Dockling, I'm just going to go down and go to the getting started and installation sections. And you'll see here, we've got a pip install Dockling. And I'm going to do a version of that, which is pipx install Dockling. Nice and straightforward. So this will take a couple of minutes to download and install Dockling. So I'll come back to you once that's completed. Okay, so that's done. So I'm going to clear this up and I'm now going to go into Finder and I will go and find the folder. So it's in forward slash users, forward slash your username, forward slash dot local. I'll just open that folder up and we can see here we've got pipx, vms and dockling and within dockling there's a folder called bin and that is actually dockling that's the executable so if i wanted to just test that out i could just do dockling and it will run there you go first time running it may take a minute so i've just proven that dockling's installed okay um, but now i'm going to walk you through the very basic way that i'm connecting to Dockling via NA10. So all I'm going to do is show you the connection method because this is a building block for for you to kind of you know, use in your own workflows. Uh, and um, so what we want is an SSH connection. So we want to uh, execute a command and we want it to a connection that's going to my uh, local um, IP address, private IP address that's not accessible from the internet. It's only accessible whilst I'm on my network, um, and that's the SSH port, my username, and my password. So if you haven't done so already, that's quite straightforward to, to connect that up. And also, you want to be looking for this green connection tested successfully. If it doesn't test successfully, you need to work out what's wrong with your various settings to, to be able to make this um, work. Actually, that's reminded me as a um, prerequisite within settings, you need to enable oh, system settings. You will need to enable See what it's called remote login that's the one okay so remote login that um, that's what you want so you want to enable remote login um, which is what enables the SSH from your system so forgot that as prerequisite but there you go okay so what we want to be doing is 
typing in the full path, which is dot local pipx, then it's vms, then we've got docling bin, and then docklink. Now, what should happen is it should return the same output or similar to this, because it's not, it's not actually all it's doing is executing the um, the command, this docklink command. So there we go. So that is successfully connected. So what we've got here is the command users Gary Judge dot local pipx vms dockling bin dockling. So that's actually the executable, and then um, I've got users Gary Judge self-hosted AI starter kit NA10. This folder, this NA10 folder, is accessible to the container um, within. So, so NA10 can actually talk to it. So the file there is the test PDF that I created. And then I've set the working directory to um, NA10. And that's so when the program is executed, it actually saves the file into the directory that it's got access to. And so what we can see here, I'll just open up this markdown file that you know, it's done what we'd expected it to. So what you would normally do though, is you would, for the this location, this path, you'd normally be looking to pick up that PDF files file name from a earlier step in the workflow. I, I'm not gonna walk through that right now, um, that's just for another day. So I just wanted to show you how to get this up and running in the first instance, but hopefully is a useful building block for further experimentation and further workflow building. If you have any questions about this video or this process, then please drop me a line, send me a comment on YouTube. Uh, and also, if you like other NA10 related videos and integrations, then have a look at this video over here.